Welcome back to Pathologic 2. It's about 6 p.m. on day 5. I have most of the things off of the map. The two ones left are actually kind of big. I need to treat a bunch of people. I need to treat the Sabrovs, and I need to treat a bunch of patients here at the hospital if I want to still receive the Sand Pest Fund, which I do. It's very important, actually. I think there's three people? Administer correct antibiotics to three patients. Yes. That's going to take a lot of supplies. <clears throat> Thankfully, though, I got a bunch of herbs from these little rivery plain places. I don't know what they're called. And I brewed a bunch last episode. I think I've got about four of all the three types of tinctures. Many of them are plus as well. But it's still going to be pretty tough. I might have to go buy some antibiotics, too. I don't have that much. I actually want to brew one more. Gonna brew Swivery and Blood. That made... Was it Metril? Was that Metril? Hold on. Swivery and Blood. Yeah, that was Metril Plus. <clears throat> and that's literally all I can brew. I don't have any more containers. Hmm. Okay, uh, these, I still have some things brewing in here, right? 47, 38, yeah. Alright, nothing to do but go. Before I go to either of these places, I want to just take a quick stop at the Broken Hearts, because they're paying double for, I think it's black? Swivery? Yeah. And I have a bunch of black swivery, so I'm going to sell them seven. Should give me probably about a thousand profit. Pretty dang good. Yeah, well, um, let's go there right now. This way will be fine. Can take a left up here. <clears throat> oh, I repaired this one, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, 150 for each black wire. Nice. I do need food. Smoked meat probably be a good buy. Yeah, let's grab it. And chestnuts? I, uh, no, I'm not going to do it. I still don't know if it's worth buying nuts from people to trade with kids, because kids value them a lot more than people. <clears throat> but I think I've seen a lot cheaper nuts than the chestnuts. Like, I think walnuts are cheaper to buy than chestnuts. Those are kind of expensive. Okay, hunger's at about half. Half? Half? I'm pretty thirsty. Don't have any bottles of water, though. I'm trying to think of where I want to go next. Sabarov? Try to treat the Sabarovs? Or to the hospital? I guess probably the hospital. I think that's more important. I mean, the Sabarovs can get fucked, right? Or, I mean, at least... Uh, what's the head Sabarov asshole? Alexander Sabarov. At least they can get fucked. I don't know about Katerina. I don't think taking a boat over there would really help much. Hmm. 
Ah, what the heck. Let's go across the Sabaravs. Let's go up here, across the Sabaravs, and then I'll head, like, up here and then down here. Like this. Need to find more bottles anyway. The only thing they want is a single match. Harpa Pride. Oh, something's really messed up with the view. <laughs> it's intersecting with the lol and... Yeah. Sister Step holds some herbs in her bosom. Others she grants to us. Then there are special herbs, the ones in the marble nest itself. The, the marble nest? And it is interesting that they call it Sister Step and not like Mother Bodo. But I'm more interested in the marble nest. In the town, White Whip is a bitter herb. It splits open the ground in infected districts. Ashen swish grows wherever swishing is heard, like the singing of sharpened knives. It can be found in districts where blood is shed. Hmm, why is that? Herbs are people too. Each has a different taste. Thank you for the advice, friend. Peanuts. Drink is this good water? Yes. I need to. Oh, right. I need. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> I have a lot more people to treat than I even first thought. That's right, I need to treat all the people that are infected. They're going to stay infected. Shit, I've got the people at the hospital, the Sabarovs. Stamatin, very important. Anna, less important. Notkin. Oh, shit. I need more herbs and antibiotics and more bottles. Fuck. I'm going to skip up Anna. Yeah, they're going to be a, the super, super low priority. Since we know what they've done, luring children. Let's go to Stamatons. Oh, that reminds me. There's something I meant to show you that I have in my notes. Remember we heard... Uh, well, let me just show you the screenshot. Here it is. Remember we were having a conversation with Ava, or... I don't remember which one made me think of it. I don't know which one happened first. But we were having a conversation with either Ava Yon or Anna Angel. And they told us about a dream that they had. And I thought, hey, didn't we hear somebody else having a similar dream? And I went back in the footage, found it, and yes, Ava Yon and Anna Angel had the exact same dream. Here's Ava Yon. I dreamt of Earth, a cemetery. Not ours, a different one, in a big city. I walked through it barefoot. Then I saw them there in the snow melt, the bones. I realized they were his beloved bones, or maybe my own even. Why? What was the purpose of my life? And then Anna Angel. I dreamt of Earth today. I walked barefoot across a cemetery, past bones and spring snow melt. Why? What was the purpose of my life? Why do they both have the same dream? They both talk about walking barefoot across a cemetery, and then seeing bones in the spring snow melt, and then they both ask, why? What was the purpose of my life? Why? What was the purpose of my life? They both say the exact same thing at the end there. There must be a connection between Ava Yon and Anna Angel, right? And then, and then this just made me think of that. Uh, I said, but he used to belong to a different girl. 
This place, did it used to belong to Ava? Yon, by any chance? Strange. Alright, Stamaton. All anybody wants to trade for is a friggin' match. Please. I worked. <laughs> wow. Right here. Thank you, Mother Bodo. Brown, brown, and brown. It's actually kind of good. I only had one brown left. But they get harder and harder to get because any place I've already been through, I've already searched most of the things along the way. Hey kid, just coming out of the bush. It's kind of weird. I don't want to trade needles for antibiotics. I mean, yeah, right now antibiotics are much more valuable to me than needles. Three needles for life-saving medicine. Heck yeah. Smoked fish. Uh, two needles. And a match for smoked fish? Yeah, that's worth it. Oh, some more. Two marbles for some? That is fantastic. Thank you. Mm, they don't give very much for walnuts. Same with them. Buddy? I mean, no, obviously. Alright, they don't need a painkiller right now. They're doing pretty good on that. I really have a good amount of painkillers, too. Three morphines and then three of my own painkillers. No, four of my own painkillers. Let's start with the, the best. Work down from there. Zirk. Is it in the blood? Hmm. Pain is pretty high. Let's use morphine before I eat. Well, hmm. Actually, maybe I should use these big ones first because none of them stack and they're quite large. Let's use the painkiller made from heart tissue. Oh, that did a huge decrease. Let's use Yas to isolate it. Okay, it's definitely in the bone. I'm trying to figure out how this works. 
to see if I can do this a better way. Oh, hey. Oh, there's actually descriptions for each of these things. The skin dries, it's either bones or blood. A fever rises, it could be anything of the three. Pupils dilate, it's either bones or nerves. Oh, I see how that isolated it. When we did the blood one, it it only like looks for any symptoms in this group of four here. And it found these two. This one says it could be anything of the three, so this one doesn't narrow anything down. This one says bones or blood, so that's why it said unknown. It could be either blood or bone. Then I tested for bone. And then I got this, which says pupils dilate. It's either bones or nerves. So if it's either bones or blood, and then this one says it's either bones or nerves, then it must be bones. I just wonder if there's... Is there a better way to do this at all? Let me check something. Hmm. I just took a screenshot of these different symbols, and I just wanted to compare them to the symbols that... I have on all these pictures on the wall of my lair, thinking maybe I could find these symbols in these pictures and these guides and that could help me, but I don't see any of them. Yeah, I don't think I can actually use those other ones. I think it's kind of just this one that's useful to me. But for the next person I treat, I'm going to actually read what each one says and see if that helps me. Maybe I could come to my own conclusion before it's completely definitive. Maybe I can make an educated guess. I don't know. Anyway, it's in the bones. And I have some good stuff for the bones. That's where I have most of my antibiotics. There's the, the bone plus. Yes, so this does work how I thought. Remember last time people's sicknesses and infections and stuff were rolled? <clears throat> Remember death rolled on infection for Peter and I think it ended up somewhere like up here. It ended up in the not filled zone. And so Peter did not die because of that. And then after that, their infection, this, went up. So... They're not going to just instantly die necessarily if I don't treat them for a day, but it does mean that their infection, of course, goes up and it's more likely that they'll die. And of course, even though I, even though I treated them now, it's also not guaranteed that they'll live because this little part of the bar is filled up and it could roll there. Oh man, that made this region care about me a lot more. They really like Peter, I guess. Okay, Sabrovs. Hmm. Hmm. I'll go talk with them at least. Bloody bandage, yay. So beautiful. So bright. Good water? Yes. Yes, good water. Hmm? The tractor. They say the Sabarovs nurture the plague, that they harbor a carrier, a girl. What carrier? Hell if I know. That's why we're here. To get him to give her up, but he won't. Keeps lying, saying there's no carrier, trying to talk us down. Soon he's gonna cause people to hunt down women on the street, like on that first day. Oh, really? They're the cause of mobs hunting down women? You don't think that's the mob's fault? And what will you do with her if she if he does give her up? Only one thing to do. Put her back where she came from. Into the earth. 
If they do find a carrier, Soporov won't need your help to deal with them. Are you dense, pal? The plague plays right into Soborov's hands. The Canes and Olgimskis have always resented him, but now he wields power. He's pulling out all the stops. Promoting order, he says. Some order. <laughs> I don't know, maybe you're right. But still, fuck you all. The townsfolk firmly believe the Sobrovs are harboring a plague carrier in their house. Have I ever visited their house before? I think so. This looks familiar. Hmm? Alexander's Reflection. Our town's always had three ruling houses. Cain, Olgimsky, Sabarov. Each one would reign over their own domain. The Cains were our head. The Olgimskis our belly. But pray, Barach, tell me what the Sabarovs held. Hmm. Well, they're actions, so I would say they were the hands. The Canes were weavers of laws and dreams. The Olgimskis were masters of money and men. To Soporov remained an executive power. Their task was to keep the streets in order in a town where there was almost no crime. I guess the genocide that the Olgimskis were perpetrating against the, t the kin doesn't count as crime. Tis funny, you see. When the houses agreed to manage the town, Sabrov was in name the Triumvirate's Head. I know not what that meant, nor what it entailed. Triumvirate's Head. It entails exactly what's happening now. They could seize control in face of a mortal crisis. Zabarov still believes that his mission is clear. Keep order. He may not look the part, but he is not a fool. He knows duty entails the pursuit of order through fear, and that violent means stain the soul of a duty-bound man. Ah, yes. The favorite excuse of vicious tyrants everywhere. Reflections writhe in the rod's corners more than in other houses. Reflections writhe in the rod's corners. Is this whole place the rod? Or is that the specific... Oh, the rod is just the name of this specific mansion. Another reflection of Alexander's? When denied respect, is a man not wounded, Barach? Not even for evil he does, but for failing to do much at all. Even more when you had not a chance to do any deed of note. There are only so many of those going round. Nonsense. The world is full of opportunities for greatness. Perhaps it is now, but not in ordinary times. Oh man, this is a sad option here. Also, I'm just listening to this music though. It's really good. Here, let me pump it up for you for a second and stop talking. soundtrack for this game is incredible. Yeah, this is a really sad option. To live a year of your life without doing something contemptible is already an outstanding feat, one I've never seemed to quite accomplish. But I'm going to say, what I'm doing now will be enough for the rest of my life. I hope the rest of my life doesn't end on day 12 of me being in the town. <laughs> I speak not of you, Barach. I speak of my master. 
his pride, his soul have been wounded by lack of respect. He needs his authority now more than ever. The Canes, the Olgimskis, never trusted our house. Perhaps this distrust never turned to contempt, but distrust it was, dear sir. What are you getting at, Reflection? Nothing. I've said my piece. You're a healer. One thinks you might care to learn more about pain. Okay, you think correctly. Thank you. If a person comes to think that you wounded their heart with deceit, does that mean that you truly are guilty of it? More so in regards to their feelings, their hopes, and their fears. Mm, no, if a person thinks that you wounded their heart with deceit, does that mean you're truly guilty of it? I mean, only if you did actually do it? What does this have to do with Alexander Sobarov? Are you not his reflection? What indeed? I just asked you a question. <laughs> then, I forgot what the question was. Probably means it was a threatening sort of question. <laughs> it's a funny option. Okay, does it mean you're truly guilty of it? No. Barley the Barber's leading the gang. <laughs> Some barber. Ah, Barach. If you've grown weary of your medical duties and seek to join the town guard, you'll leave disappointed. Your expertise would be wasted on the streets. Not to mention we're almost out of leather caps. Good to see you've kept your sense of humor. So what brings you here today? The hunt for the urchin that carries the plague? If so, don't bother. My porch is already packed with volunteers. Pockets full of matches and kindling leave no room for common sense. I'm here to check on you. You're clearly overworked. Don't bother, I'm fine. Everyone is overworked these days. You, Ruben, Dinkovsky. All the actual workers, unlike those layabouts outside. I could use your help with another matter. With those layabouts, I assume? They showed up this morning claimed to have, claiming to have found the carrier. A homeless little girl, clearly infected, but nonetheless alive and well. I know perfectly well what urchin they mean. Be assured, she has nothing to do with this. How can I help? You're a doctor. They'll trust you more than me. Tell them they're mistaken. Better yet, if they capture her, they can't hurt her. Without her, we're doomed. Isn't that right? Tenkovsky told me that, about his vaccine project. I'll remind them of the shop knock hunt and how that went. Mob justice doesn't solve anything, but who's this orphan carrier girl they're after? I have a bad feeling. It seems like the dark cloud hangs over Alexander today, not Katerina. Yeah, let's go speak with Katerina. I think they're around back. Well, I guess let's speak with them here. Well, healer, will you tell us about the carrier? Is she in there? With him? Listen carefully and tell everyone, even if there is a carrier, that carrier is our salvation. What does that mean? We'll make a cure from that person's blood, a vaccine. We need the carrier alive for that. They also say she's not alone. Not everyone dies from this sickness. Do you get what that means? That 
That's intriguing. But anyway, I do, but we need to make sure, and that's not your job. If there are people who get sick but don't die, the plague must come from them. You fucking... <sighs> what do you know about connections? That's not how any of this works, you fool. I know slightly more about the plague now. I need to keep searching. Even silly rumors may hold a grain of truth. I assuage the crowd, but the cause of their anger still haunts me. Is it true that not all victims of the sand pest die? This place isn't marked on the map anymore, so I don't even know if I can talk to Katarina. What's going on back here? She's shown her true colors, the false mistress. If our beloved white swan Victoria were here, she'd be out on the street, shielding people from trouble. And Nina. If she were around, none of this would be happening. That's the sort of power she had. But this one just locks herself up at home. A useless mistress. I remember Nina. After her, a plague feels like a little more than a funhouse. So she was a woman of character, so what? They're all like that. Why ask more of her? And what power she had. She radiated heat like a blazing forest fire. This one doesn't even give off light. This one? The Sabarov woman, Katerina. She's never had power. Utterly barren. We used to pity her, but now she's worse than barren. She sows poison. Nonsense. What poison? You know nothing, you dolt. If you don't know the power of the mistresses, then shut your mouth and show some respect. Have some sense. Some give off heat, some give off light, some give off poison. We sense that she gives off poison. Uh, I suppose I should be going? Weird way to end the conversation. This is a lot of reflections. Katarina's reflection. The wisest women in our town would take the title mistress. A word that calls to mind the tales of ancient sorcery. Do you believe in such a thing? Mistresses were... Two extraordinary women in the town's ruling families. There was something undeniably uncanny about them. Stepson, you bear the marks of nature's flow upon your skin. But mind how thin the twire runs in your veins. You are more stone than earth. Like ships must catch the wind in sails, our town relies on nature's flow. Nature is everywhere. Everything lives by her flows. None know how many winding paths there are. None know what forces run their course. There are no words for what they hold. To see them calls for gifted senses, gifted minds. And should one hear the call of such a gift, what feats, what brave new world they'd find with it, like being the very first to hoist a sail. Such gifts are not yet the domain of mankind. Victoria Olgumskaya and Nina Kena, one five foot six, one six foot one, mortals, but seen as giants, for they could feel the powers move across the firmament. And? Some merely know the flows, some feel them now and then. A mistress tastes those waves, might drink of them, and when the stars align, might ride them. The people felt such women knew the workings of the world itself. And that's it? 
How is that not enough? The mistresses kept their hands quite clean of rough and tawdry magics. Victoria knew not, not a spell that brought the dead to life. But Nina did inspire fear. Along her steps, doors shut and children hid. But those two women gave the town its life. None know the hows or whys of such a power. I've heard that Victoria did raise the dead, but that's probably just a rumor. Two mistresses there were, and all felt that to be correct. For one was night and one was day, one was heat and one was cold, one was storm and one was calm. Contrast reigned. Nina held court over schism and unease. Victoria's domain was peace and nourishment. The bright and the fearsome, as they were called. The Canes had Nina. The old Gimskis had Victoria. When Sabarov returned with his young bride, my Katerina, there was no place for her in such a scheme. But her hairs would raise and her skin would sense it. And once Nina did perish, Katerina took her place and seized a name for herself. Nina the Wicked, the Wild, or the Nocturnal? Nina the Nocturnal. Nina did only drive men to fear, but Katerina, naive as she was, mistook the nuance of Nina's role for a romantic darkness, and that in turn would drive her down the road to frightful things. Luckily, she never became a second Nina. And is that such a blessing, sir? Nina did not just take children from their mothers. She tinged our lives with color. Recall how in her days to walk the streets was an adventure. Yes, I remember those days. Victoria died, and Canarina replaced both mistresses. Two roles to play. She grew into neither. But patient folk would wait for her to find her gift, and some may still await her day. True, it is easier to be fearsome than kind. Wild Nina begat Maria, the talented. Warm Victoria begat Capella, the gifted. My mistress has no one. She take any child to raise as her kin, gift or no gift. Mm, that's why the changeling has been adopted. She's been adopted by Katerina because she would take any child to raise as her kin, gift or no gift. And the changeling certainly seems to have some sort of gift. If nothing else, the gift to be extremely creepy. Is she ashamed? She sits in darkness, weaving blackest yarn from heaviest thoughts. She'd rather knit baby socks. Instead, she drapes black folds around her throat and chokes. I don't know if I like either option here. <laughs> there, there, no need to cry. At night, we hear her talk to herself, mad. I failed to give life to the town, talentless. I failed to nourish town or child, giftless. I failed to guard against plague, useless. I am barren. I could prescribe something for her nerves. Can I just, uh... Oh my god, there's actually something here. Have you heard? Such wondrous news. We wait in awe for our new daughter, true and talented. And such a talent, sir, a blessed gift. And now we are not two but three, and one will much more mighty than two be. So 
So where is this girl? She walks the streets and does her chores, bound to this plague somehow. She has the gift, so she must stay to stop the plague. Salvation can and must come from the house of Soporov. I've met that girl. She does indeed carry a long list of chores. Man, I love how those bed sheets look. They look amazing, don't they? All rumpled up. I love it. Those are good bed sheets. Oh, I can't even I can't even talk to Katarina. Only their ref Only their reflections. It's kind of eerie. Okay, you are treated. Uh, thankfully, nobody here actually needed treatment, which is good. <laughs> it's really good. I can't really spare it. Town hospital now, I suppose. Yeah, let's go. Uh, don't suppose I can do some parkour like I did on that fence? Nah. I tried. Ooh, my exhaustion's really high. Don't have any coffee. I mean, not like dangerously high at the moment, but I should look for the coffee person. <laughs> 